Hi Summit Kids, thanks for watching Kids Church today. Our big picture question is, why does sin separate us from God? Well, you see, God is holy and cannot mix with sin until we trust in Jesus. And then he washes away our sin and makes us right with God again. We're gonna learn more about God's holiness this month. Did you know that some things are impossible without God's help? Think about it. Could Moses have split the Red Sea and walk on dry ground without God? Absolutely not. Could David defeat Goliath without God's help? No way. Well, listen real close, because in today's Bible story, you're gonna learn another story that it was impossible without God's help. One day, Saul was walking home after working in a field. He heard an unusual sound. The people in his town were weeping loudly. What's the matter? Saul asked. Why is everyone crying? The people told Saul. Some messengers from the city of Jabesh came with a message. They said that Nahash, an Ammonite leader, came with his army and surrounded the city. They were going to capture the people, but the men of Jabesh wanted to make a treaty instead. They agreed to serve Nahash, but Nahash made a terrible request. He wanted to take out everyone's right eye. The leaders of Jabesh asked for time to get help, so Nahash gave them seven days. If no one comes to help, they will have to surrender. When Saul heard this report, God's spirit came on him and he was very angry. He sent a message throughout Israel, calling for men to come and fight. The people came together, hundreds of thousands of men from Israel and Judah, to fight against the Ammonites. So Saul sent messengers back to the city of Jabesh. The messengers told the men there, deliverance is coming tomorrow. And the men of Jabesh rejoiced. Then the men sent a message to Nahash. We will meet you tomorrow, and you can do whatever you want to us. The next morning, Saul organized the troops. They invaded the camp where the enemy army was staying, and they defeated Nahash and the Ammonites. Saul announced to the people, Today, the Lord has provided deliverance in Israel. Then all the people went to the city of Gilgal, and there, before the Lord, they made Saul their king. They gave offerings to God and rejoiced. God chose Saul to be the Israelites' king. With God's help, Saul brought the Israelites together to defeat their army. God sent his son Jesus to be our king forever. Jesus brings together everyone who trusts in him and gives us victory over sin and death. Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for questions from kids. Kaylee, from Shawnee, Kansas asks, Why does God let some people be in positions of power if they are not good people? Well, Kaylee, that is a question that many people are asking today and have been asking for a very long time. Well, first I wanna say that none of us are good. So when we ask that question, I think sometimes we assume that we're good or that some other people are good and then some are bad. The fact of the matter is none of us are good. The only good we do comes from God. And that good comes from God through the power of his spirit. And he gives us his spirit lavishly and freely. It's also good for us to remember that we're all under God's power. We're all under God's authority. We're all under God's dominion. And whether you're a leader in a city, or you're the leader in a school, or you're the leader of a nation, we're all under God's authority. It's also good for us to remember that God can use both godly and ungodly people for his purposes. And we see that in the scripture time and time again. Sometimes God will take a mighty, strong, and powerful king and have him eating grass, have him walking around eating grass until this, until a leader turns his heart and affection to God. 
And then God can also use godly kings like Josiah in the Bible that chase after God and try to figure out God's plans and his purposes. And so in our Bible story today, Saul is no different. Saul is a man under God's power and under God's authority. And he chose at one time to do what was right and another time to do what is wrong. And so we all have to make those decisions every single day, whether we're in positions of authority or we're not in positions of authority to do what the scripture tells us to do. I want to encourage you to pray for our government officials, pray for city leaders, pray for the mayor in your town, pray for the leaders in your, in your local church and pray for the leaders in your school and pray for your parents that may be leading you in all these areas. My encouragement is to pray for those people in positions of authority. Here's a question for you all. Can you think of other times God used people who did evil to ultimately bring about good? Farmington is home. This place actually used to be called uh, Tota, uh, which is Navajo for three rivers because there, there are three rivers that meet here in Farmington. You have Native American cultures, you have Hispanic cultures, you have white culture, and all of them are, are blending together. Growing up Navajo and Hispanic, I mean, the, the, these are my people. So it was always going to be when I finished up my college and seminary education to come back home and to do gospel work here. This is a forgotten area. It's a neglected area. The Navajos are forgotten people. Um, and so there are a lot of problems here, a lot of drug abuse, a, a lot of alcohol abuse. And, and you combine that with poor education, high literacy, broken homes, a lot of poverty. It really creates this perfect storm. So I got hired on at a high school here. Working in the schools has really given me a unique opportunity to share the gospel with a, with a variety of students as they, as they come into my office. They know that there's someone at the school who cares about them, who they trust, who they can go and talk to. And what that has done is with our youth group, it's predominantly these, these students coming from that context that want to know more and they're hungering for more. There has to be churches for these people. So when people give, it enables us to do ministry, to do ministry effectively. The Navajo people are just like any other people. They're a people who have a proud, rich history, but they're a people who need Jesus Christ. So we're here to spread the gospel, to give the good news to a forgotten people in a forgotten place. It's announcement time, and guess what? Kid Craze is happening this summer. It's the funnest camp in town, so you have to come. It's June 26th through 29th, and we're gonna play games, watch Bible stories, have snack and dinner together, crafts, outdoor games. It's a blast, so I hope you can come. So ask your mom to sign you up today, okay? Well, our time together is over. Have an awesome week, kids. Bye.